All right, so now we're going to talk about um, nomenclature. In other words, how we're going to name these organic molecules. And we're going to follow kind of some rules that are set upon by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or the IUPAC. So basically, they have a system that again follows a set of rules that basically makes it so each organic compound has this, a unique, unambiguous name. So no matter whether you're a scientist in the U.S. or a scientist in Germany or Japan or wherever you are, everyone is using the same system to talk about the particular chemicals. Um, so whenever we're naming them, we're going to look at uh, different kind of parts of the name. So they're going to have like a parent name that kind of tells you how many carbons are in the chain. There's going to be a suffix that talks about the particular functional group that's present, right? Whether is it an alkane or is it a carboxylic acid or is it an ester, right? So the suffix is going to tell us about the functional group. And then the prefix is going to tell us about the identity, location, and the number of substituents attached to the carbon chain. And these substituents can be um, basically small carbon groups, smaller than the parent chain. It can be things like a halogen or so on and so forth. And um, we're going to go through the rules a little bit. And then the best practice, you know, in terms of understanding this nomenclature is really just to do it and do it and do a whole bunch of practices, which I'll finish off this video doing a handful of those. All right. So talking about the substituents, the substituents, um, like I said, they can be halogens or other types of molecules, but carbon containing substituents are referred to as alkyl groups. And an alkyl group is basically, um, it's a carbon containing group that's attached to the rest of the, of the chain of the molecule. So basically if you have a carbon substituent that is one carbon long, one carbon long um, one carbon long alkane would be methane. Okay. Now, if you have a methane group that is converted into a substituent, what you're going to do is basically remove the A N E ending and change it to a Y L ending. So it becomes methyl. So a one carbon substituent would be methyl, two carbons would be ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, hexyl, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so it says up here elsewhere on the slide, it says that if you have um, an alkyl group, it's basically formed by removing one hydrogen from an alkane. And I think... Um, this is described pretty well on the slide here. So if here's your methane, right? Because an alkyl group is attached to the rest of a molecule, you need to free up a bond, right? Because carbons we know have four bonds. So in methane, all four bonds are with hydrogen. So by removing one of those hydrogens, you then free up this space right there, right? For carbon to connect to the rest of the the parent chain, right? So the rest of the something else, whatever that might be. And again, for an ethyl group, again, you free up a spot for it to bind to something else and so on and so forth. So that's why we say we remove a hydrogen in order for it to be a substituent. I think you'll see a little bit better whenever we start naming some of these exactly what that looks like. Um, all right, so here's the list of the substituents. I kind of verbally went through them and now you have a slide that shows everything. Um, and that basically brings us to a molecule. And I figured the best way to do this is just to walk you through the actual naming of one of these. So here is an acyclic alkane, right? A linear alkane. And the first rule is going to be to find what we're going to call the parent chain. All right, so the parent chain is going to be the number of consecutive carbons in a row that we can find attached to each other. So we can look at this in a number of ways and there's no particular directionality. So we can basically um, start by looking at this carbon here and saying, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So in red, we have six carbons. 
Now I could also do this, I'll do this one in blue. I could start at the same carbon and I could go one, two, I can go up here because that carbon's also attached to it. And that one would have three carbons on. Um, I'm going to go erase what I already have because I think it's, it'll get too confusing. Um, let's do another one in green. I don't have to start at that one that I've been starting on. I could also start up here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, that's another way to get to six. So, so far six is still the winner and we could start from over here, but again, we're going to end up with the same thing. Uh, so no matter what we do here, the longest we can get is six. Now, I do want to show you that I can circle six as they are in green, or I could also get six as they are here in red. So there's two different ways I can get to a six carbon long parent chain. The beauty of this organic nomenclature and naming the molecules is both of them will give you the exact same answer. And I will go ahead and prove that kind of after I'm done with this video. But just to um, simplify things a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and erase both of these. And for at least our first one, let's just go with the standard. We're going to circle just straight across the chain. Now, when we're naming the parent chain, we're looking only at the carbons that are attached. And we see that there's six of them. So in this case, the parent chain is going to be hexane, right? Because hexane is a six carbon long molecule. By talking about hexane, we, we talk about the carbon and any hydrogens attached to it. So I could actually go back and I'm gonna erase this one more time and I'm gonna circle the carbons and the hydrogens that are attached to it. Now, I have to finish like this because this carbon right there is attached to another carbon up here, right? So those two carbons, I can't circle the carbon up there because those extra carbons we're going to have to name separately. All right, but the parent chain is going to be hexane, and within the hexane is everything kind of included in my red circle there. All right, so the first part is done. Parent chain, in this case, we have hexane. Step two is we want to, whoops, unzoom. We want to name and number substituents. So the substituents are going to be the, anything that is basically not circled already has to become a substituent. So just for clarification, I'm gonna undo that one. Um, so the substituent is going to be the guy that is here up top and I will circle that one in green. So that is going to be our substituent. So that substituent is one carbon long, right? So a one carbon long substituent, we're gonna call that a methyl group, right? It's just like methane, but it doesn't have CH4 because the hydrogen that would be down underneath the carbon is instead attached through, through that bond to another carbon, right? So that's going to be a methyl group. Now, that's the naming part of it, but we also have to number the substituents. So to number the substituents, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our parent chain and we're going to number the carbons two different ways. We're going to number them left to right and right to left. So in green is going to be the numbers going from left to right. So carbons one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then in blue, I'm going to number them going the other direction. Carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. The idea here is that you want to be able to number them both ways because remember these molecules, even though we're looking at them on a flat screen right now, they really kind of twist and move all over the place. So you can imagine grabbing it and flipping it 90 degrees and the blue numbers would basically become, or sorry, if you flipped it 180 degrees, the blue numbers would become the green numbers and the green numbers would become the blue numbers, right? Because you're just flipping it over. Um, the, CH, the CH3 methyl group that we have there would end up on the bottom of the molecule, but that doesn't change the molecule at all. So we want to be able to number it to make it clear what it is we're talking about 
um, with this molecule because as you can see right now, if we're going to number that methyl group, it's either going to be on carbon two or carbon five. So how do we know which one to pick? Well, our rule here is we're always going to give the first substituent, and in our case, we only have one substituent, the lowest possible number. So in looking at this, we have either a two or a five. Well, two is lower, so we're going to get rid of the blue numbers here. Right? The blue numbers go away because two is lower than five, and now we're going to use those to write our final answer. So we're going to name and number the substituents. So the, it's a methyl, and it becomes 2-methylhexane, which would be our final answer here. So the rule here with writing these is anytime you have a number next to a letter, you separate it by a dash. And if you have two numbers together, which we'll look at an example here in a minute, if you have two numbers together, you separate them by a comma. Um, and any letters just get squished together. So two methyl hexane. All right. So that's the general rules. So now that we've done that example, what I want to do is kind of go through and talk about some, some things that will often give people a problem. But actually, first, I almost forgot. Let's go back and look at what would have happened had we um, drawn the parent chain a little bit different here. So I said we can draw the parent chain multiple ways. So we also could have drawn the parent chain this way, right? And in that case, if we would have numbered the carbons, this would be carbon one, carbon two, three, four, five, six, right? Because again, we're just looking at consecutive carbons bound to each other through a bond. So we have six carbons in a row bound to each other. This is at, um, if you remember back to one of the previous videos, it says the bends in the molecules don't matter. Well, here's an example of a bend in a molecule, and it doesn't matter because we're going to end up getting the same thing. Because what you can see now is that we still have a methyl group here, and that methyl group is attached to carbon 2. So that still gives us 2-methylhexane. So either way of doing this, you're going to get to the right answer. Okay, so a couple um, important points, right? The longest chain may not be written horizontally, and it doesn't matter if it's straight or if it has bends. And it shows you some examples here. In all of those cases, the shaded areas show the apparent chain that is connected, and all of those have six carbons in that parent chain. Um, the numbering, again, remember, you're always going to number to give your first substituent the lowest possible number. Right, so we did that in our example. And then finally here, um, every carbon is either part of the parent chain, which is the longest chain. So I could return this one parent chain to be consistent with our nomenclature. So every carbon belongs to either the parent chain or a substituent, but it's not part of both. So once you circle it and name it in your parent chain, that's, you're done talking about it, right? So something is either part of the parent chain or a substituent. Each substituent needs its own number. So even if you have two substituents attached to the same carbon, they would each get their own numbers. You can have an example of something where you have 2,2-dimethylhexane, for instance. Um, in other words, you would have the number 2 twice. And then the last bullet point there, it says if two or more substituents are identical, use the prefixes to indicate how many. So in other words, if you were to have two methyl groups in your molecule, you would say dimethyl. If you were to have three methyl groups, you would say trimethyl. If you have four substituents, let's say you had four ethyl groups in your molecule, you would say tetraethyl, and then whatever the parent chain would be. All right. So again, the more practice problems we do, the, the more this will make sense. But these are important rules to understand kind of moving forward. Um, so how do you combine whenever you have multiple substituents and numbers and a parent chain and a suffix? Um, in our case right now, let's start by talking about the suffix and we'll work backwards. Um, the suffix in alkanes is always going to be a, N, E. 
right? Um, whenever we get to alkenes, it'll be ene, -E, but that's going to be the suffix, okay? Um, and then whenever we get to other types of molecules, we'll add more involved suffixes like oic acid and things like that. But for now, with the alkanes, the suffix is just ane, A-N-E. All right, the parent chain, right, that's going to be your hexane or butane, right? And I'm using the alkane suffix because that's what we're going to be talking about first. And then you're going to have numbers and then um, there's substituent names. So, right, every substituent is going to have that number. So it's really like number, then name, then parent, and suffix. If you have a molecule that has two different substituents, like a methyl group and an ethyl group, the, you alphabetize those substituents. So you alphabetize, ethyl is always going to come before methyl. So maybe if I write this down, it might help. So, et, well, actually, Let's look at carbons, like up to a four carbon substituent. So you would have butyl would come first, and then you would have ethyl, and then you would have methyl, and you would have propyl, right? And those are probably the four substituents you'll see the most. Again, those are in alphabetical order. Now, the important thing here is it says ignore prefixes. So, in other words, if it's dimethyl, that does not mean it goes before an ethyl because you're, you're always alphabetizing the M in methyl, not whatever the prefix is, not the di, ta, tri, or tetra. Um, for each substituent, there has to be one number. So, if you have four substituents, you have to have four numbers. And even if the numbers are the same, that's okay. All right, and then you separate numbers by commas and numbers from letters by dashes. So following these rules, you can name pretty much any alkane we throw at you. 